Playoffs are here. Celtics still waiting to find out their first-round opponent. And here's the playing tournament scenario. You get Miami and Philly. They're playing Wednesday night. The winner gets the seventh seed and will play the Knicks. The loser will then play the winner of the Bulls-Hawks game. And uh, the winner of that gets to play the Celtics in round one. So it certainly seems like it's going to either be the Sixers or the Heat in round one, which concerns one Sports Illustrated's Chris Mannix. This first-round series, it absolutely terrifies me because we both know Neither Miami or Philadelphia is a typical 7-8 seed. Miami has been kind of going through the motions this year, but the core of that team that went to the finals is there, and they will be tough to beat. In Philadelphia, they would be a much higher seed if Joel Embiid had been healthy all season long. He's back. He's ready to play. That, that, is, that has the potential to be a nightmare first-round matchup for the Celtics. Tom Giles, Phil Perry. We got Cedric Maxwell joining us now. Max, how's it going? Oh, great, gentlemen. It is a uh, absolute pleasure to be here tonight. Well, it's a pleasure having you. And uh, as we look at the Celtics, it, I, how are you feeling? Because it seems like Chris Mannix was uh, quite concerned. Get a dog, big fella. Get a dog if you're afraid. This team is a great team. And the way they're playing right now constitutes who they are. This is a defensive team. They get things done on both ends of the floor. Yes, they had a huge lead, and then they start coasting a little bit. I didn't really like that, but I tell you what, when I look at this team in totality, this team really can run the table. They just have a lot of great pieces and veterans and younger players. I love that take. Get a dog if you're afraid. I I'm not afraid of the heat. I know Chris Mannix is afraid of the heat. I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that are afraid of the heat on the Celtics' behalf. They shouldn't be. Number one, I think the heat's time was, was last yeah. year. I think they're pretty much cooked this year, pardon the pun. I also look at it, Giles, as, as an opportunity if they do end up facing Miami. And again, I, I hope they do. It's an opportunity to get over that boogeyman. Get over that hump that's in front of you. If there is anything mentally there in the Celtics' heads, face it head on. Face your fears. Do away with them. If you lose to the Heat, you weren't meant to win the finals anyway. That's fair. So see them early. Do away with them. And then maybe get a little bit of momentum, a little bit of confidence that would come with a series win over a team like that. So it's interesting that, that the Heat are keeping brought up in this situation. Philadelphia, they're 31-8 and with Joel Embiid. So they've legit had success with Joel Embiid on the floor this year. So I can understand why that would be one where you say, you know, maybe you don't want to see Philadelphia. Now, if you end up seeing Philly, it means that they lost at home to Miami, then had to play again on Friday. And I guess the one thing you could say is that, well, it's Joel Embiid, you know, he's, he's trying to play his way back into shape exactly. right now. Exactly. Joel Embiid is trying to get back into shape. And the thing about Joel Embiid, if you look at him right now, those legs, knees, ankles, all these things right now, are they working together? The Celtics have played – Philadelphia extremely well this year. Over the last couple of years, they've, they've dominated Philadelphia. This team does not have any fear when I think about looking at them. And when I look at Christoph Porzingis, what he brings to the table, he makes a guy like Joel Embiid get out on the floor and have to guard people. So I, I like the Celtics' chances yet again. Do you have a team that you prefer that they see in the first round? Well, probably Miami because I could be at – down at the pool. Right. Lay down. Hey, you know, hey, <laughs> selfish reasons are totally acceptable on this, uh, on these airways. For Talk sure. about the yeah. basketball team, Max. Yeah, the basketball but, team. yeah, but you know, I, I I agree with you. I think get it over with. Get get this over with. When you think about playing Philadelphia, this is the team that you want to play. Get them over. Get it out the way. That boogie man that everybody's talking about. You know, meet him head on. Yeah, Gabe Vincent is not going to be like the second coming of Ray Allen again, right? He's not even on the team anymore. Right Caleb, Martin. Caleb Martin's not going to be Jordan again. I mean, that, yes. what a ridiculous series that guy had. I just don't see that happening again. I understand there's, there's some trauma there for Celtics fans and maybe for some of the Celtics themselves, but I, I would welcome that matchup. Take it head on. All right. Uh, obviously, you can join the conversation as well, voting in the poll question here. Which potential first-round matchup concerns you the most, uh, Philly? or Miami, or you're not scared of either, go to NBCSportsBoston.com slash early edition, scan the QR code you see right there on the screen, and scroll down to the poll. What I'm hearing is, too, and, and, and obviously this team finished 64 and 18. Maybe there are some fans out there that didn't like the way they finished the regular yeah. season. What, how, how did you feel about the way they finished the regular season, considering they, they didn't have anything to play for the I, last I couple I mean, of that was – they, they did not. I mean, you, there was nobody to push them. They had played great all year. Uh, where there's some spots that, that really bother me is rebounding the basketball, uh, too many second-chance opportunities. But if I look at this team, what they have right now, are they built right now to win the championship? And are they building right now? I talked to Joe Mazzulla, and, and one thing we were talking about, he said, uh, I got to get this pressure off of J Jason Tatum. 
I said, you can't do that. He said, why? I said, because there's a thing called social media. And he's in social media, and social media is all over. My broadcast partner, Sean Grandy, said, this is the greatest offensive team in the history of offensive teams. Well, during the regular season. In Boston, we don't cherish regular seasons. What we do, we cherish what happens in the postseason. Is there anything that can alleviate that kind of pressure other than just winning? Nothing. Not, not in this city. You know something? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, if you win it, then, yeah. then the pressure is off of you. But as long as Jason Tatum and this particular group does not win, there's more pressure because everybody right now yeah. is saying they're the front runners. In this city, all around the country, they were built early on as the team to beat. And are they? Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah. Of course they are. No, well, I guess maybe let me ask it this way. Are they head and shoulders that much better than everybody else? It, 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 even when you're looking at the, I, the Western Conference, you're looking I, at Denver. And well, you see, if you tell me I'm in the Western Conference, I'm in the finals. Yeah. And I still believe they're better than Denver because even in the two games that Denver won, Denver was able to play well, but they didn't. The Celtics never really played their A game. If the Celtics play their A game against Denver, I think this is a very winnable series that they can get in. But that, that you know, the team that that makes me more afraid than anybody else playing against the Celtics, the Celtics. Yeah. Getting in their oh, own, you and get, I are speaking get, the same language there, Max. Way. We had to lay out our, our top five biggest threats to the Celtics <laughs> not winning a championship. And number one for me was the Boston the Celtics. Celtics. And for me, it, it does come back to how they handle the ends of these games. I know we both feel fine about the Celtics matching up, whether it's Philly or Miami, whoever it is mm -hmm. in the first round. But those kinds of teams are the kinds of teams that could create a close game and could create a final shot sort of opportunity. I'm wondering how you have viewed how they've handled those spots where you do get a lot of dribbling from somebody like Jason Tatum and forces a shot at the end and might not go down as opposed to running the offense that they run I mean, for let me, let me ask you a question. 40 like minutes. You, like you asked a minute ago. How many games have they lost? Uh, what was it? It was 18. 18, 18, 18 I think. 18 right? yeah, is yeah. Like the, not a lot of dribbling situations that they were in. And I understand what you're talking about. Tatum had the ball and maybe moving it around. But for the most part, this team has been very diligent about making the proper reads. Derek White has had a great year. I mean, you look at down at Pritchard stepping up yet again. Nobody said the Celtics had the bench. Hauser comes off this year. This team right now, from top to bottom, has no weaknesses that I see other than rebounding the basketball, and that's all about heart. Okay, look at the poll question right now. 52% say that they're uh, not losing any sleep either way. 29% uh, say that they'd be a little concerned about the Miami Heat. Philadelphia getting 19%. Listen, as long point. as you, listen, Peyton Pritchard had a great night the other night, I just don't want to see Peyton Pritchard guarding Jimmy Butler the way we saw last postseason. Yeah. Max, I think there's a lot of, speaking of pressure, and you're talking to Joe Mazzulla, there's a lot of pressure on Joe Mazzulla oh, to make absolutely. sure that he's making the right calls so that some of these matchups don't look the way that they did in the postseason last year. Everything about this team right now is there's pressure involved in it. And you, the only way you eliminate it is that you win a championship. Will, be, will Butler be involved in him? No, I don't think he'll be because you have White, and right now you have Holiday. So I don't think that that's the matchup that you're going to see. And I'll tell you who's really been good. Jalen Brown has been really good stepping up, guarding people defensively. What I want from Jalen, though, is to increase his rebound total. The other day, some part in that game against the New York Knicks, he had uh, zero rebounds. You can't be out-rebounded by Josh Hart by 15-0. to zero. And they, there have been some times this year where they've been uh, mm -hmm. hit pretty hard on the glass. Uh, one last question. As we look at this play-in tournament, and I mean, you got both the Lakers and the Warriors who are playing in the Western Get them Conference. out of here! What, what, but what I'm saying is, the play-in tournament, is it working? Because I love it. I think it's setting up a ton of drama this week. It's, it's allowing two more spots to be open. Yesterday, you had a ton of drama. I mean, it's, yes. it, it's been a major hit. Yes. As soon as you get the fakers out of here, I'll be happy. <laughs> Because they're at the bottom of, of this thing. And, but, but I think it's good for the NBA because you have all these other teams who are involved who are going to be playing in it. The suspense is going to be good. And this one and done for some of these teams right now, that is going to be special. 